Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. Welcome back to another post-apocalyptic meal. These are meals that come in a can that have a very long shelf life. If you've missed my previous episodes, including breakfast and lunch, I will put those episodes above and down below. Today, I'm going to be tasting cupcakes in a can. Yes, I'm going to have some post-apocalyptic cupcake desserts and these come from Japan. Now these are Japanese emergency rations and they are cupcakes that come in a can. Amazing, right? There's no reason why you can't have dessert after the apocalypse. You can have them canned. These were very graciously found and sent to me by Paul over at Critical Eats Japan. I'll put a link down below to his YouTube channel where he tries all kinds of Japanese treats because he lives in Japan. So big thanks to Paul for finding these and for sending these to me. But I'm super excited about tasting these because this is dessert in a can. Japan is located in an area where there is a lot of earthquake activity. So there is a whole section of food dedicated to emergency food rations. And that's where these fall in. These are little desserts that you can keep in your pantry for quite a while. Although now they look at the dates, they say 2022 and 2021. So the shelf life is a few years, not so long, but they are still breads in a can. They have this little kind of cocktail tuna fish little pull release here. And I have three flavors. I have chocolate, I have maple, and fruit mix. So the only other bread product that I've had canned is the New England style brown bread. It's made by B&M, I believe, and you can find it here locally in the supermarkets. And I had never heard of it until I moved to New England, but it's a pretty classic bread, but that is the only one that I've ever found in a can. So I'm very curious to see what these are like. Oh, I take that back. I also have had a hamburger in a can, which did have some bread in it. And if these are anything like those, I am bound to be disappointed, but I'm keeping my hopes up because cupcake in a can sounds terrific, right? So Paul translates this to maple cupcake, but on the picture here, they have a picture of honey. Interesting. For reference, this can is about the size of a Vienna sausage can, maybe a little bit wider in diameter, but similar kind of height and similar way to open it. We've got this little pull tab here. Oh. Ooh, and it smells very mapley. Smells like a bear claw. Smells quite nice. I do believe that's the bottom of the cupcake. So let's invert it on the plate and get it out. Ooh, does it? Come on, come on, little cupcake. Now getting it out of the can seems to be tricky. <laughs> How'd they get it in there in the first place? So getting the cupcake out. Is proving to be a little tricky, but I think we'll manage. Oh, I don't want to break it. Oh, it is proving quite challenging to get these cupcakes out. I don't want to mess them up. It's a very tight fit. Look at that. Okay, come on. Come on, cupcakey. Come out. <laughs> it's a very tight fit. Oh, come on. Huh. There it is. <laughs> it actually looks a bit more like a muffin. I think when I imagine cupcake, at least in terms of the American sense of cupcake, that means copious amounts of buttercream frosting. And without it, and in this kind of paper liner, it looks more like a muffin to me. Although it smells very strongly of artificial maple flavor. It smells good. So why don't we unbox or uncan all of these first and then I can do a little taste comparison. So that is the maple. This is mixed fruit cupcake. So same thing. Ooh, I hope this paper liner is gonna be green. That would be cute, yellow, green, and maybe brown. Let's see. Mmm, no. Hmm, this one doesn't have that much of a smell. It smells like a baked good, but nothing distinctive, not like the maple. Ooh, and this one too is tricky to take out. I'm trying to shake it. Ooh, ooh, I tore the paper on that one. It's really difficult to get a grip on, pull this out. 
Come on. Like the pull tab's easy enough to open the can, but then to get the cupcake out is just really difficult. How'd they get them in here in the first place? Oh, maybe they bake them? I don't know. Ooh, okay. Oh. Oh man. Very snug fit. Okay, there's the fruit. It looks pretty similar to the maple. Doesn't smell similar though. Save the best for last. Chocolate. Same yellow liner and same difficult to get out. <laughs> Ooh, this one smells nice. Nice and chocolatey. So you gotta tug pretty firmly on the wrapper here. Get the cake out. Okay, here it comes. Ah. There's chocolate. There's a little bit of cake on the bottom there. Ooh, I've loosened that one a lot from its paper liner. So there we have it. The three cupcakes in a can. <laughs> So I'm gonna taste these in the order in which I open them. So maple first. Look at that. So it looks quite oily. This is kind of interesting. Look at the honeycomb pattern of cake that's left on the liner here. That's beautiful. And that's actual cake, crumb. So that leads me to believe maybe the vessel this was cooked in had this kind of honeycomb pattern. Absolutely beautiful. Alrighty, so let's look at the crumb here. It looks to be quite dense. We have some larger bubbles here, but pretty dense, small bubbles. Very strong smell of maple extract. And let's give this a taste. Let's cut this one more time. And look at that crumb again. A couple large holes, but generally speaking, pretty small holes. Alrighty, let's give that a taste. Itadakimasu. That's actually quite nice. The crumb is small and tight and kind of airy. The texture reminds me a bit of Castella cake, a very popular cake in Japan that uses a lot of meringue or egg whites to kind of leaven and lighten the cake. There's a little bit of sweetness in there, but it's not overly sweet, very typical of Japanese sweets. Very, very different than a typical cupcake you would find here in the US. Not nearly as sweet, and of course we don't have the frosting on top, but a very nice little dessert very pronounced flavor of maple extract kind of similar to a maple bear claw it's quite cloying and lasting i still taste it it tastes a little bit nutty too a little bit like butter pecan but quite nice little cake very very moist as well mm -hmm. it doesn't taste tinny and all and doesn't taste like it has a ton of preservatives in it either now let's try the fruit mixed one so this one too is wrapped in this little paper doily and again we've got this little honeycomb pattern interesting so let's cut this open and see if we can see any fruit. Ooh, indeed. Looks to be some candied dried fruit in there. Let's give this one a taste. It smells sweet, doesn't smell like anything distinctive. All right, here we go. Mm. So the texture of this cake is very similar to the first one, light and airy while simultaneously being very moist. The flavor is not as distinctive. I do taste the fruit, Mm. Mm. I can't really pinpoint what kind of fruit that is. I think it's candied because it has a bite to it. It almost feels like walnuts, but it doesn't taste like walnuts. I'm not such a big fan of this one. The first one I liked, even though it had a very strong artificial maple flavor, because I felt like that flavor combination with the cake texture worked really well. This one, not so much. So I saved the best for last. Now we have chocolate. This one also has this really beautiful honeycomb pattern. And let's cut this one in half. Let's take that little bit of fruit off. Alrighty, so although this is chocolate and is darker than the other cakes, it's still pretty light for a chocolate. Let's cut this in half again. But again, we have that similar kind of crumb. Mostly a tight, small crumb, but an occasional big pocket, but has a really nice chocolatey 
smell to it. Alrighty, let's give this one a taste. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. That's nice. It has a very rich chocolatey flavor to it, but it's not heavy. It doesn't taste fudgy or feel fudgy. It doesn't feel heavy or overly sweet, but a nice little kiss of chocolate in there. Mm hmm Moist yet light and not overly sweet. Quite like that. The texture is very similar to say like a chiffon cake, not as tender as say an angel food cake. There's a little bit more density to these but the similar kind of airy quality to them. But I really enjoy the level of sweetness. If you're a fan of traditional American cupcakes, you may not like these as much because these are significantly less sweet. And of course you don't have the frosting on top and the crumb is very different. It doesn't tear or crumble nearly as easily as a cake or cupcake would if you have an American style cake. Look at this, this is brilliant. These have a safety edge on them so you won't cut yourself. That is so smart. Typically when you open these here, at least US style cans, these are almost razor sharp. You have to be very careful, but these have a nice rounded edge. How considerate, I love that. Not surprisingly, of the three cupcakes, chocolate was my favorite. And then I would say maple is next. And a distant third, the fruit mix. That one I didn't care for much of at all. On the picture here, it has a picture of melon and mango, neither of which I really tasted. Alrighty, so there you have it, the post-apocalyptic dessert, Japanese emergency ration style. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever had bread in a can, let alone cupcakes in a can. If you have, I wanna hear all about it. Big thanks to Paul for sending this to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye! <laughs>